Guys, what's going on? Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. First thing you'll probably notice if you are familiar with my show is I look different. I'm not wearing a hat. This is actually your first time on this channel with over 500 videos that I'm not wearing a hat. Or actually, it's the second time, definitely. There's one video I did years ago. I didn't wear a hat and I actually had hair. <laughs> so changing up a little bit, uh, going for a different look this year. Uh, but I want to talk about, obviously not my new look. I want to talk about the Ouya. Uh, and the Ouya came out uh, late December of 2012. So it's been around for about three and a half years. Um, and this one's cool because this is modded uh, in a way that's got a lot of really cool games in it, uh, emulators in it. And I, I do want to say a big thank you to my friend Damien. Uh, so thank you, Damien. I'll put a link to his channel below. And he helped me modify my Ouya. So I'm, you know, this Ouya is no longer around retail wise anyway. It discontinued last year. Uh, company Razor, uh, we make computers, they purchase the, you know, the remaining assets of Ouya. And I think they're trying to revitalize Ouya. So initially it started with Kickstarter, it was pretty successful. That's an Android based system. Uh, but what's really cool about being Android, you can actually load ROMs onto it, emulators. And so what you need to do that, you, you obviously need the Ouya. And I have like a one terabyte uh, external hard drive here, but you'd be amazed how many games can fit into a hard drive. Now, I realize this is a kind of a controversial topic about emulators. And, and believe it or not, in this bad boy right here, I have every single NES game, Super Nintendo game, original Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Neo Geo, TurboGrafx-16, Genesis, Virtual Boy. The list goes on. MAME, of course, arcade machines, games, ever created in this one thing. Or actually, it'd be typically in the hard drive here. So that's pretty amazing. Thousands of games at your fingertips in a small device like this. Now, what are the benefits of emulators? Because I know this is kind of controversial. A lot of people are pro emulation, a lot of people are anti emulation. To be honest with you, I'm kind of down the middle on the whole thing. I can certainly see sides of both things. Here are the benefits of having uh, something that's uh, an emulator machine like this. Oh yeah. Um, first off, it plays in HD, which is cool. It's got HDMI out, so that's really cool. Um, it also, you can save your game at any point of the game, which is pretty awesome. Uh, and you got everything on your fingertips. So opposed to going like in my collection and, and sorting through all my, my games I have, I can actually go and, and just play them right here, which is sweet. Uh, also, I'm able to play games that might be out of my reach uh, as far as price goes, or maybe games that were never translated into English, maybe came out in Japan. So it gives us an opportunity to play those games that were really expensive. So what are the downsides about emulation? Well, there certainly are some downsides about emulation and, and some big ones. Uh, sometimes the emulator, uh, isn't perfect. So this audio might be slightly off, the pictures might be slightly off. To some people, uh, it might affect their purchasing habits, uh, you know, supporting uh, game developers, right? So uh, for me, that's not necessarily the case. So for example, if I saw, you know, I played a game uh, like Knights of the Round, it's a little harder to find game. You know, I played it and I went out and purchased it because I'm like, this is cool to have. So for me, I'd much rather have a physical copy of the game. I think there's a lot to be said, having an actual physical copy of the game presently. Uh, and just not just for display purposes, just for collecting purposes. So, so even though I have every single little Super Nintendo game on this thing, on this device, I'm still going out and buying games because that's just, you know, I'm a, I'm a gamer, I'm a collector by heart. It has not affected me. But for some people, I think some people are quote, quote, cheap uh, and just say, hey, I have every game here. I don't need to go out and buy games anymore. Uh, and that's unfortunate for them anyway, because they're missing out. I think a lot is to be said about having the physical copy of the game. Uh, and that's that's pretty much it. I mean, there's some other downsides. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think about emulation because, again, there's, there's positives, there's pros, and there's cons, just like everything else. But I'm going to show you what's what's in this hard drive, how this is all set up. It's called a, through an app called Nostalgia, which is pretty sweet. Uh, I'm going to show you some games and how they run. Um, so, yeah, it's just kind of a neat device. Let me know what you guys think. I'm curious what you guys have to say. Please leave a comment below and let's take a closer look. One thing that's really nice about the, the Ouya is the interface is really simple to access games and ROMs. So I'm going to open up the MAME emulator. And what MAME stands for is Multiple Arcade Machine Emulator. I pretty much have every single arcade game that was ever created in this in the hard drive here. So everything's alphabetical. I go push left and right to scroll thing through things. So if you want to go through a game that's, you know, maybe starts with a Z, it's obviously going to take you a bit longer to get to. Here's what I want to highlight. This is Alien vs. Predator, a classic Capcom game, which, to my knowledge, was never ported to any home console. Uh, and this is a great beat-em-up. I highly recommend this game. This is such a fun game to play multiplayer with. And during the 90s, the, these beat-em-ups were, were certainly really popular, and this one just stood out to me as one of the better ones. I'm going to play as Predator, and you basically go out and fight these aliens. So this is a really, really fun game. 
uh, for Mame, and it plays great. But they have other main games, of course. They have the classic ones from the 80s, and that, that one's obviously from the 90s. Um, the loading time does take a little bit of time to load ROMs. This is Nostalgia. What's cool about this app is it shows you the box art covers for a majority of the games. You can see that I actually have multiple uh, ROMs in here. So I have multiple Adventure Islands or Lolo 2. Some games, the art doesn't necessarily match up. For example, if you go to Contra, the original Contra, it will show Contra Forest. Not a huge deal, but really cool. Everything, again, is alphabetical. I'm pushing the R1 button to scroll through it down. You go RL1 to scroll up. Everything is alphabetical. Of course, I'm going to show you a game here that I, I personally really enjoy and a game that I don't own in my collection, which I would love to. Unfortunately, it's super ridiculously expensive right now, and that is Bonk's Adventure. This game initially came out uh, by NEC or Hudson Soft for the TurboGrafx-16, and this is a really fun port uh, for the NES. Obviously, the graphics aren't as good as TurboGrafx-16, but overall, this emulator plays great uh you know it looks great in hd the music's great the graphics are great uh, this game was also ported to the game boy the original game boy so you can get a lot less expensive on the game boy so if you have a game boy you want to check out box certainly game check out the next emulator i want to show you is the super nintendo emulator probably one of my favorite systems of all time everything's alphabetical uh and let me show you this what's cool if you hit l2 you can actually scroll through the different systems so really easy uh, to navigate through everything. Some box arts aren't necessarily there. I'm missing a few. Curious what your guys' favorite uh, Super Nintendo game is. This is Knights of the Round, another great beat-em-up, uh, also by Capcom. <laughs> uh, and Capcom, you know, obviously released a ton of beat-em-ups. Probably Final Fight is their, their best well-known. This is a port of the arcade, and this is ported to the CPS, uh, Supercharger as well, system, whatever. Uh, but wasn't ported to any other console, didn't come out for the Genesis or anything like that. And it's kind of like Golden Axe in a way. There is kind of an RPG element to it too, where you can get level ups. Um, this is N64 emulator. I'd have to say here guys, that a lot of the games, you know, I'd say majority of the game, more than half don't work properly, unfortunately, but they're, they're the ones that do work, work great. I tested the two Zelda games. Uh, they work good. Uh, Mario 64 works good. But there's ones that, that don't necessarily work well at all. Uh, Super Mario Kart 64, I couldn't get to work, which is too bad. Or Mario Kart 64, I should say, that doesn't, didn't work, uh, which is one of my favorite games for the system. But I'm going to show you um, Goldeneye, because that Goldeneye is definitely one of my favorite games for this N64. And it was the game that, to, really got me, to me, really got me into first-person shooting. So I'm going to start playing it. We'll restart it. It's always going to ask you if you, you know, it already saves it from where you left off, which is, which is nice. But I just loved playing multiplayer. Uh, Goldeneye was unbelievable. This game is uh, definitely aged not well over the years. The controls are, you don't have the two analog joysticks like you do with a lot of first person shooters today. So um, definitely ha it's, it's a little tricky uh, playing with the one analog stick. Uh, so you have a lot of auto aiming in the game. Uh, but Nonetheless, this opening scene just just definitely iconic, and this is probably one of the better games based on a movie uh, that I've played. They're, usually, games that are based on movies aren't necessarily very good. I think this definitely uh, is is one of the better ones for sure. What what other games can you think of that are based on movies that you guys think are worthy of checking out? The emulation on this isn't perfect. You'll notice some 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 scrolling. Uh, issues there there's a little bit of lag it's, it's nothing major uh that's that you know gonna affect the gameplay but this is definitely a situation where playing on the original n64 is it, it, much better plus one one downside i forgot to mention about playing emulators is that you're kind of at the mercy of the controller that you're using so in this case i'm using an ouya controller which honestly isn't the best controller in the world um it, it definitely works but i would prefer using an n64 controller when, when playing this game. But with emulators, you can map various buttons and stuff like that. You can make it a little bit easier on you. But nonetheless, nothing beats playing on the original controller. Uh, here's a Genesis, of course. Great system. Uh, Genesis games, actually. Uh, there were actually uh, 897 Genesis games that were released for the system, which, which is pretty amazing. Um, we're going to check out Batman by Sunsoft. Based on the classic movie, came out in 1989. One of my favorite movies of all time and one of the better Batman movies uh, that I think is out there. 
and this game um, is great. Uh, it's, a, it's a great uh, side-scrolling beat-em-up game. You have uh, the boomerang. You have uh, you can beat people up. Um, you have a hook. You can use really fun graphics too. I think just the the Genesis to me had a unique sound to it, a unique graphic style to it that simply the Super Nintendo uh, did not have. Up, oh, starting to rain. Such a cool looking effect. Here's another one, Comic Zone. This is also for the Genesis. This is a game I wanted to show you. Uh, a really hidden gem on the system, in my personal opinion. This is a game, it's kind of a shorter game, but it's super challenging and it's all done kind of in a comic book style. Uh, so it's, it's again, it's a beat em up, uh, but it's more of a unique, probably one of the more unique beat em ups that you'll see. And this was exclusive to the Genesis, so this never came out uh, for the Super Nintendo. Uh, to me, comparing the two Genesis, or between the Genesis and Super Nintendo, comparing the two systems, I had both growing up. Uh, of course, big battle. Uh, Genesis had, was a fast processor, but Super Nintendo had better graphics and sound, in my opinion. Game Gear, I couldn't get uh, any, it would just crash after a minute or so. So none of the Game Gear games would work, but there are actually 363 games that were released. Here's Sega Master System, 341 games released. Most of those were actually in Brazil and in in other countries. Here's one's kind of funny. This is ALF based on uh, the classic TV ser series, a sitcom, which which is actually really fun. This is kind of an interesting game. This is exclusive, as far as I know, to the Sega Master System. Uh, color, color, color-wise, Sega Master System, I believe, had better color than Super Nintendo, or rather than NES, because they're both 8-bit. Um, but obviously, third-party games were a lot better on uh, the NES than the Super Nintendo. The next game I'm going to show you is Mortal Kombat 2. This is for the Sega Master System uh, by Acclaim. And this is like all 8-bit. So it's actually pretty impressive what they can get away with in 8-bit. Again, uh, I think the Sega Master System, in my personal opinion, was a more powerful system than NES. I'm not saying it's a better system, just more, more powerful. I couldn't see this working on an NES system, for example. It's kind of hard to play with two buttons, though. Uh, but one thing cool about Sega, of course, is that they did have blood which is cool where, you know, Nintendo oftentimes in the 90s, they would edit all that blood out, uh, even for the Super Nintendo port. So that's cool. A good port, kind of interesting thing to check out. Uh, another uh, good game for the Sega Master System is uh, Golden Axe Warrior, which is like a Zelda clone. Definitely check that out. Uh, game Boy. Guess how many games came out for the original Game Boy? You guys won't believe it. 1,049 total games came out for the original Game Boy. A ton. Uh, this is Battletoads. Of course, came out in various systems, Genesis, NES, a bunch of systems by Rare. This is actually, what, the second Rare game I've showed you? I showed you uh, Goldeneye, first one. This is the second one. As you can see, I'm a big fan of Rare Soft. I uh, definitely had to get their, their collection that came out for the Xbox One recently. And again, a beat-em-up. I don't know. It's, I think it's just coincidental I'm showing up all these beat-em-ups, but definitely a genre that I enjoy, obviously. This game it is hard. It's, it's a little bit different than the NES port. You can load. You can, you can actually add cheats, which is really neat. You can do screenshots. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and exit here and we're gonna show you exactly how long the loading takes between many. So it takes a few seconds, as you can see. And a few games on, on like, there's also a Dreamcast emulator on the system. I couldn't get any of the Dreamcast games to work. There's a PS1 emulator as well on the Ouya. I couldn't get any of those PS1 games to work. There's Bonx for the Game Boy I mentioned before. This is Boxel. Uh, and this is actually a really fun game. It's based on a classic Japanese game. I forget the name of it, but this is a puzzle game and they add some kind of weird love story to it. I'm not quite sure why there's a love story to it. Uh, it doesn't make any sense, but it's a puzzle game and the object is very simple. You're supposed to get all the boxes on the dots, uh, but it's a puzzle and there's only a certain pattern way to do it. You have to figure it out. There's a whole bunch of different uh, areas. So I'm actually pretty stoked. This was actually recently imported to the ColecoVision through Homebrew, which is pretty awesome, and it's a great port for the ColecoVision. Um, but yeah, this is definitely a game to come check out for the original Game Boy, and it came out earlier on uh, in the life of the Game Boy. Love the original Game Boy. Uh, we're going to move on to Game Boy Color. Game Boy Color had uh, 576 games total release for it. I'm missing a lot of the box art, obviously, uh, and there are a handful of games uh, that were released. I never got too huge into the Game Boy Color, to be honest with you, like I did the original Game Boy, but still some really good games came out for it. And I'm going to show you uh, a different style game. I'm going to show you King Griffey Jr. Slugfest because 
Uh, that game is not a beat em up. I want to ch- change it up a little bit. It's obviously a sports title, but really cool. Obviously, the Game Boy Color wasn't the first handheld to play color. They had the links and you know the Game Gear and all that. But uh, about time that, that Nintendo entered the the world of color for handhelds, and battery life was was really decent for the system as well. This game also was ported to the Super Nintendo and uh, living up in Seattle at the time. Uh, big fan of the Mariners. And Nintendo still owns part of the Mariners, I believe, as well. So good game to check out. Classic baseball game. Move on to the Game Boy Advance. You won't believe how many game, games came out for the system. 1,074. So more games than the original Game Boy. Um, a lot of fun. Um, and I'm going to show you Earthworm Gem, which was ported to a handful of consoles, including Super Nintendo at Genesis, and there's Earthworm Jim 2, uh, and this is just a, a, one of those really fun platforming games to check out, and the Game Boy Advance is actually a really good port to, to check out, and it's really nice to, to play the Game Boy Advance on the big screen, of course, you can play it through the Game Boy Advance uh, adapter for the GameCube, which is really cool, I really recommend it for the GameCube, you definitely check that out because you're able to do that here, and definitely a lot better playing on that than it is the emulation, as I mentioned before. So we're going to go ahead and exit this. And move on to the next console, which is uh, the Atari 2600. And total games released was 565 total games for the Atari 2600. Uh, and these games don't take much space up. But, you know, this is when... Just, I remember my neighbor had Atari 2600. And I used to play, go over and play it all the time. I'm going to show you the Notorious E.T., probably one of the worst games of all time. And uh, it's based, obviously, on the movie. And they, you know, they bury, end up burying a bunch of these in a landfill in New Mexico. There's a documentary that came out recently. They're talking about that. And you just get stuck in these pits. You're supposed to collect these parts that to build kind of telephone and foam home. Problem is, you end up floating out of these pits. And you end up dropping back in. It's just kind of, gameplay-wise, Howard Scott Warshaw uh, programmed this game. He only had a limited amount of time to do so. I think three or four months before the holiday season was really rushed to do so. Um, this game, TurboGrafx-16, gosh, this is probably one of my favorite systems. Super underrated. 138 games total came out for it. This is Air Zonk, which is by Hudson Soft, and it's kind of the same family of Bonk's Adventure. Uh, sweet, spicy, and bitter are the modes. It's kind of funny. Um, and this is actually a, a shooter, opposed to a platforming game like Bonk's. And this is a great game. And one of my favorites for the systems, for sure. I just love the scrolling. and just... A really fun game to check out for the Triple Graphics 16. Um, we're going to move, move on to the Neo Geo, which is a system that had 149 games released. A really long lifespan. Uh, and if you want to collect for the Neo Geo, I definitely encourage you guys get to collect for the MBS, the arcade, opposed to the AES, which is the home console, because the games are significantly cheaper. Now, some of the ROMs have multiple ROMs of each game. Some of the ROMs don't load, as in this case right here. So you got to wait for it to load. It just takes a couple minutes. Not a big deal. Uh, but the emulation... Uh, does work well. I'm going to show you Metal Slug, which is a, a running gun shooter. Um, really fun game. If you, if you like games like Contra, you will love the Metal Gear, uh, Slug series. I believe there was compilation disc games that were released for the GameCube and other consoles uh, back in the day that have all the Metal Slugs on it. And the original Metal Slug for the AES port is actually sells for quite a bit of money. There's a high demand for it. Um, this is the Japanese port. Of course, Metal Slug 4. You have four different characters to choose from. And just graphically, it, the Neo Geo is, is one of my favorite systems. It's really cool. It's like having the arcade at home. Games would cost over $100 uh, each back in the day. So uh, that back then, the 90s, super expensive, but it was super advanced. Hence the AES, Advanced Entertainment System. That's the name, the name which definitely fits. Moving on to the Neo Geo Pocket, the younger brother. Uh, this is also Neo Geo Pocket Color. Uh, Neo Geo Pocket Color, 140, uh, I'm sorry, 83 games were released for the system in total. And interesting enough, there was a game I'm going to show you called Sonic the Hedgehog, a pocket adventure, which to my knowledge was actually one of the first uh, third-party games that Sega released for Sonic on the console. I don't know what year this came out, but it's actually not a bad Sonic port. Uh, much better than actually the original Game Gear port of the first Sonic. It plays more like your typical Sonic game. Uh, and you can kind of see graphically style. The Neo Geo Pocket was overshadowed by the Game Boy Advance uh, at the time, and that just dominated the handheld market. And the last emulator I'm going to show you is one of my favorite systems of all time. That is the Virtual Boy. Only 14 games came out for the North American release. A handful of others, I believe like 20 total, came out in Japan. Not every ROM is on here. I'm missing Space Invaders, which came out in Japan, unfortunately. I can just load that in. 
Uh, but I'm going to show you Jack Brothers. Uh, this is the hardest to find game in North America. Uh, this game alone can sell for hundreds of dollars. Uh, this is by Atlas. And the emulation is actually really good. Obviously, it's not in 3D, unfortunately, uh, but actually works really well. I have a, uh, it's kind of cool. I have a Virtual Boy emulator on my Pandora handheld. And actually, that you can wear like red and green, uh, three, red and blue 3D go uh, glasses. And actually, it uh, looks 3D, which is cool. This one you don't need to, but you get the idea. And, and this is kind of a unique platforming game. The goal is to collect keys, kill enemies, collect keys, and kind of advance on the stage. And it's a, kind of a top down. And when you're playing this on the Virtual Boy, it looks really amazing. So anyway, you guys get the idea of this. Oh yeah, let me know what you guys think. What is your favorite system uh, that I just showed you? And what games do you recommend for each system? Uh, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you guys soon. Take care and game on. First off, guys, thank you so much for watching. Also, please subscribe. That means a lot. And if you want to stay in contact, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I also have a website, GameStreetY1.com, and I have t-shirts available that help support the show as well. And those are available at ChopChopGoods.com.